hello everyone. Welcome to today's webinar on completing your 2016 annual information statement. My name is Matt Crichton. I'm an education officer here at the ACNC and joining me today for to present today's webinar is my colleague April Kitchenham. Hi everyone. Before we get into um, the webinar proper today, there's just a few tips um, before we start I'd like to run through. First, if you have any difficulties um, with the sound on your computer, try calling the phone number listed in the GoToWebinar control panel. It's another way that you can get the audio is to call that phone number and listen through the phone line. Also, if you'd like to ask a question throughout, you can type it in any time to this GoToWebinar panel. On the right-hand side of your screen, you should be able to see um, a little box for uh, questions. So if you wanted to ask a question at any time throughout the webinar, feel free to do so in that um, text box there. But just on that, we will allow some time at the end of the webinar um, to ask to, to do a Q&A session effectively. So if you wanted to hold off until the end of the webinar and ask a question then, no problems. We'll, we'll be able to address as many questions as we can um, after the presentation. Also, the answers to the questions will be um, directly to the questioner and they will be um, answered privately unless we think that the answer is, is general and would be of use to everyone. Um, if you would like your question to remain, uh, the answer to remain private, please let us know. And we do suggest you keep your questions general. Um, if you wanted to ask something specific about your charity and your charity's obligations to the ACNC or how your charity needs to complete a particular section of the annual information statement, it's probably best to give us a call directly and um, have one of our uh, advice services team members help you through that. And if we can't answer any of the questions that come through today, no problems, we'll get back to you via email in a follow-up email later on. We are recording this webinar, so if you do um, have to leave at some point earlier than, it, than um, the end or you, you miss out bits, an internet connection drops out, that sort of thing, never fear, you can log on to our website um, in a few days and see the entire webinar. And of course, we always look forward to receiving feedback. So at the end of the webinar, if you have any feedback that you'd like to pass on to us, send us an email at education at acnc.gov.au. We'd love to hear what you think and if you have any suggestions for improving this sort of um, product. All right. With the admin stuff out of the way, we can move on to the presentation and I'll pass you over to April. Thanks, Matt. Um, so, like Matt mentioned, today we're going to be talking about completing your 2016 annual information statement. So, on your screen there is just what we'll cover today. So, first off, we'll go over what the AIS is and what a charity needs to report on the AIS. We'll go over when the AIS is due and how to submit the AIS. And we'll go over what is needed to complete the AIS and also an overview of each section of the AIS. And we'll finish off with some, um, bit, some bits and pieces about what action the ACNC can take if a charity fails to submit its AIS. So kicking off, um, for those of you who may not be familiar with the AIS, um, the AIS is basically an online form that asks questions about a charity's operations and finances. So we often refer to it simply as the AIS, as saying annual information statement over and over again can be a bit of a mouthful. Um, so it just contains some questions about a charity's activities, its beneficiaries, operating locations, um, its staff, and also it asks you to confirm that certain charity information is up to date. So that's your governing documents, your responsible persons, and your subtypes. Um, there are also some financial questions um, included in the form, so you'll need to put in some figures from your profit and loss statement, for example, and medium and large size charities will also need to submit a financial report with the annual information statement, and we'll go into those requirements in a little bit more detail later on today. Um, but it is a requirement that all charities need to comply with, so all charities need to submit an annual information statement every reporting period, um, unless they have an exemption 
and um, the exception that we're referring to there is charities that are registered with the Office of the Registrar of Indigenous Corporations, or ORIC, um, but those charities must continue to report to ORIC as usual. Um, so that's just a bit of a nutshell explanation of the AIS. Thanks, April. Um, the due date for the annual information statement will be different for all charities. This is because um, it depends on the reporting period of a particular charity, that is the, the, the dates to which they uh, report internally. And most charities will, have, uh, will report to the regular financial year of July to June. But there are some other reporting periods that are fairly common and, and charities' AIS due dates will um, reflect their own reporting period. The rule, though, is that an AIS must be submitted within six months of the end of a charity's reporting period. So, for example, the organisations that do report to a regular financial year, that being July to June, they are required to submit their annual information statement within six months of the end of that financial year, being the end of June, meaning their due date would be at the end of December. Similarly, an organisation that um, reports to, say, a calendar year from January to December, their annual information statement would be due again six months after the end of their reporting period, being the end of December, means that their annual information statement would be due by the end of June. The two most common deadlines, as you can see on the screen here, are the 31st of December for charities reporting to the regular financial year and the 30th of June for charities using the calendar year reporting period. So that means that we've got, well actually, before we get onto that, I have to mention the extension there that we've got listed on the screen. So even though the six month deadline following the regular financial year is the 31st of December, the Commissioner has um, allowed a, a one month extension for those charities because of the Christmas and New Year period where the ACNC is shut for a period of time and this um, extra month, this extension, um, allows for the, the, the lost time that charities may have had in December where they wanted to contact the ACNC or, or get, get some advice or help in completing an annual information statement. So even though the 31st of December is technically the due date, there is an extension that is granted to those charities, which means that their due date becomes the 31st of January, which is only a week away. So there are a lot of charities that are um, trying to get their annual information statement prepared and submitted in the next few days. So just on the due dates, um, what can you do if you're not too sure of what your reporting period may be or when your annual information statement is due. So what we'd suggest is jumping onto the ACNC website and going to the register. You can see the URL there, acnc.gov.au forward slash charity register. And then you can just pop in your ABN or your charity name to bring up your charity's listing on the register. And on that listing, um, it will actually display um, what reporting period we have recorded for your charity and your subsequent due date. Um, so the, I guess the default reporting period that we have for charities is the July to June um, financial year. So um, I recommend just reviewing that information and if that um, reporting period is not correct, uh, just jumping into the portal and updating that information. So we've got a little screen grab there that um, yeah, will show you what to look for on your register listing that will highlight your due date, the annual information statement or financial report that's due um, and highlight whether or not it's been received and if so, the date that we received it. And some more information there on rep reporting due dates if um, you need some further clarification around that. Great, thanks April. Um, one of the questions that we often get here at the ACNC is, um, a request for the form, the physical form, to be sent to, to charities or they haven't received their form yet and they're a bit unsure about how they're supposed to um, complete their annual reporting. The annual information statement is an online form and it's contained within the ACNC's um, charity portal um, which is accessed via the ACNC website. So it isn't 
um, a, a physical form that you wait for the ACNC to send to you and then you fill out and, and send back in the way that you would expect for, for some other organisations, I guess. It is, it is contained entirely within the website, so you, you don't need to um, mess around with any um, filling out any paper. You just log into the website and complete the form and submit it in there. There are two ways you can get there. As I mentioned, it's contained, it's, um, there's an access point from the website uh, the ACNC website, that is the home page. You can see the top right hand corner little purple tab that says portal and also under that um, a link which says submit the AIS which can get you to the, the charity portal. Otherwise you can go directly there by putting in that um, URL as we've got on the screen there, charity.acnc.gov.au. Whichever way you access it, um, you will end up in the same point where you have to log in. So once you've um, gone through those steps that Matt's just taken us through, um, you'll be taken to the Charity Portal login page. So from this page, um, you can log into the portal um, in just a few easy steps. Um, so the first uh, thing that you'll need to do is um, accept the terms and conditions, and that's just by clicking that little radio button there that's highlighted with the red arrow on your screen, um, which will then bring up a box where you'll pop in your username and your password. So your charity's username is your ABN number, um, so that won't ever change and that's just something you'll need to type in um, the numbers of without any spaces in between. And then your charity will also have its own unique password. Um, so the password was something we would have sent to your charity very early on, a few years ago now. Um, so understandably that could have been lost along the way or misplaced or um, not passed on when committee members changed or, or whatever it may be. So don't fret if you haven't got that password. We do have a password reset available online. Um, there's a link on that page there um, on the website where you can just follow some prompts and we can get you a new password quick and easy. Um, and yeah, once you just got those details, you'll just pop them in and that'll take you to the portal homepage. Which looks like this. Once you're logged in, it's very um, easy to get to the annual information statements. The top left hand corner, the first link there, submit annual information statement. That's the link you click on to get into the form. There is other information within the portal um, about your charity and um, some of its details and, and this is where you manage uh, the, the administration of your charity um, with regards to ACNC obligations. The, it, I guess it's worth mentioning that um, changing committee members or board members and, and some details about your organisation is not um, managed through the annual information statement. So if there are a few changes that you need to make, you need to do it here in the portal before you get into the annual information statement. You see in the middle of the main part of that homepage there, there are also alerts. So if your charity is missing something, it's missing some information, it doesn't have a governing document or there are, there's, there's a few responsible persons missing from, from the listing, then it will alert you there and then you can click on those um, little alerts and, and uh, fill in the details that you're required to. So once you're ready to submit the annual information statement, um, there's some information that we would recommend um, having on hand just to make the process um, a lot quicker and easier for you just to avoid having to save your answers and log out and log back in again while you um, gather that information. So first off, um, we would of course recommend having that username and password. Without it, you won't be able to log into the portal and access the form. Um, another handy resource to have is the 2016 Annual Information Statement Guide. Um, now that can also be found on our website and it's a really good resource to have as it goes through the Annual Information Statement questions in detail and explains um, how to answer those questions. So if you're not sure, that's a good reference point. Um, pays to go, uh, sorry, annual reports and any other project reports are also handy. Um, they can help answer questions about your activities and how you've carried out your charitable purpose. Um, the pays to go payment summaries will also help you answer questions about your employees, um, your, your employee numbers that you're required to pop down in the form later on. Having any funder, donor or grant acquittal reports um, might also be useful for you as well. 
um, and importantly those financial documents. So any financial reports and statements such as your balance sheet or statement of financial position, any um, statement of profit, profit or loss and other comprehensive income for the reporting period will help you answer those financial questions. It is really worth getting all of this stuff ready before you get into it. It makes getting through the form a lot easier. And this page will help as well. Um, first, the, the URL down the bottom, the acnc.gov.au forward slash 2016 AIS. There are a few handy links, um, as you can see. Complete the checklist, draft your answers and read the guide. It's worth having a look through some of those resources. The checklist just provides, a, as it suggests, the name suggests, a checklist of the things that you may need to complete the annual information statement. Draft your answers is an optional worksheet that you can use if you wanted to draft some of the answers on a piece of paper before putting them into the form online. And the guide is really, it's a comprehensive guide and it goes through every single question contained within the AIS and provides um, uh, an explanation of, of the terms and, and what's required in each of the questions and can be used to um, help you out if you get stuck on any of them. So it's handy to keep that one um, with you as you go through uh, acnc.gov.au forward slash 2016 AIS. Also there is some guidance from the home page, um, more targeted I guess to, the, to some of the financial reporting aspects of the annual information statement. So if you wanted to um, have a look at that, um, hover the mouse over the Manage My Charity tab from the home page and you'll see a link which says report annually and within that a little sub-menu that brings up much of the guidance that would be relevant for answering the financial questions within the annual information statement. It's worth having a look through those if you anticipate some troubles with that part of the form or um, you just you, you wanted to make sure that you've um, you got everything ready and you're, you're confident that you'll be able to get through the form, that part of the form when you get to it. So now what we'll do is we'll have a look at each section of the AIS and just briefly go through what each section asks for. Um, so first off is Section A, Charity Information. Um, this section is fairly straightforward. It really just asks you to confirm the basic information about your charity. So that's your name, your contact information and your charity size. Um, if you've completed previous AIS submissions online, so that's your 2013, 2014 and 2015 AIS, a lot of these answers will be pre-populated for you in the form. So that'll just make it that little bit easier and quicker for you to complete. Um, but you can of course change those pre-filled answers if they're uh, not up to date. Um, one more important thing to note about this section is it does ask you to confirm your contact address and your address for service. Um, so your address for service is important because that's the address that we use to send formal documents and notifications to. So for example, uh, we do send reminder letters, letters and emails um, in the months leading up to the AIS submission date. So um, having the address for service up to date um, is a way to ensure that you don't miss those important notifications. From section A, um, we move to section B, which, is focus, which focuses on your charity's activities and gets into the operations of a charity. This section um, will we'll ask about the activities that your charity uh, undertook throughout the year and activities, importantly, activities can be financial or non-financial. For example, um, something as simple as developing a strategic plan or employing staff or doing administrative work are all activities. It, it, there's a, um, often a misconception that the word activity in this context means something um, more tangible, some, some classic charitable works undertaken in, in the field or on the street or you know running a soup kitchen or doing aid work overseas, that sort of thing. It's not only that sort of thing. It can be um, activities as simple as administrative work and developing a strategic plan. So it's important to keep that in mind. The purpose of this question is to identify inactive charities. So if you are unsure about whether your charity has conducted any activities, it's probably uh, a, a better bet to select yes because it's in most cases it's likely that a charity has conducted an activity of sorts in the year. If you do answer no, 
You must explain why your charity did not conduct any activities through the 2016 reporting period. So if you plan on answering no, it's, it's probably worth having a think about that and um, thinking about the reasons that you'll provide um, to explain that. This section will also ask about the main activities for your charity in the 2016 reporting period. Where possible, select the activities under the options provided rather than selecting other and, and typing in um, a range of activities that you think are more appropriate. If any main activities that your charity conducted are not listed, and we're talking about main activities here, um, you, you may select other and, and briefly describe them using a, a single word or, or a phrase. In some instances, um, some charities tend to select other where there are some existing categories that would be more appropriate. For example, an activity such as childcare could probably fit um, under social services. Similarly, community services could be economic, social and community development. Disability services would be social services. So rather than immediately skipping past all the pre-existing categories and clicking other to put in your own description, it's best to have a think about the main activities of your charity and see whether or not they would fit into the categories that are provided in the form. We will just quickly have a look at this part of the form now. If you bear with me, we're going to switch from the presentation to the annual information statement to give you an idea of what we're looking at here. So section B activities. As you can see, the first question asks you whether or not you conducted any activities or not. And as we've talked about, it's most likely going to be a yes. When you get to main activity, this is a mandatory question, of course, and you have to select from the drop-down menu here and choose the, the category that best suits your charities main activity. And I know that some charities do a range of activities and, and um, uh, help out the community in, in a number of different ways. And it may be difficult to pinpoint a main category, but we ask that you do think about your charity's main activity and choose the appropriate option from the drop-down menu here. And then there are a series of options for you to select. before asking you which areas in which you conduct, uh, conducted your charitable activities. Question 11 asks you to describe how your charity's activities and outcomes helped achieve your charity's purpose. As we've got there, it's worth just describing some key points, maybe from your annual report. It doesn't have to be from your annual report. If there are other sentences or other phrases you'd like to use to describe your charity's activities, how your charity's activities and outcomes helped um, achieve your purpose, then, then feel free to do so. But try and keep it succinct, keep it brief, and, and keep it um, targeted to the main things that you did. Moving down further to this, in this part of the form, there is a question that asks about your charity's beneficiaries. And this is the, this is the uh, category of people that your charity works to help. In some um, circumstances, this may be really easy for a charity. They, they clearly help one particular group within the community and, and it's listed here and, and it's a very easy and they'll be able to move on to the next part of the form. But for a lot of charities, it's pretty difficult because they have a, a purpose that could be, appropriate, uh, could be applied to the general community in Australia and it doesn't specify particular uh, groups within the community. If that's the case, it's probably best to select general rather than selecting specific and then clicking every applicable box. It's best to just recognise that your charity probably doesn't have a particular targeted group um, on which it focuses. So general is probably the best answer there. However, if your charity does target a particular group, for example, in this, um, as you can see on the screen here, I've got adult 65 and over. If my charity targets adults of that uh, age specifically, then it's probably worth choosing a specific beneficiary group. 
there are quite a, a range of groups there, so think about what your charity does, what its main activity is before answering this question. And if you do have a purpose that is, is available to most people in Australia or a general community in Australia, it's probably worth clicking general rather than specific and then choosing every single box that may apply. I might just head back to the presentation now. Anything to add for that point, April? Uh, no, I think you covered that. That was great. Thanks, Matt. So moving on to Section C, um, it's probably another one of the more straightforward sections. Um, section C, Human Resources, is about the people who work or volunteer for your charity. So uh, this section will just ask you to put down the number of your employees, so that's your full-time and part-time employees, and also your volunteers. So just to clarify, um, full-time employees are those that work more than 35 hours or more per week, while your part-timers are those that work less than 35 hours per week. And your volunteers, those um, people can be regular or irregular volunteers. They may have volunteered once for an hour or they may have volunteered every day. Um, each charity will of course be different. Um, and it's also important to keep in mind that volunteers can include any unpaid board or committee members. Um, and just a little tip, if you're not too sure of the exact number of your volunteers, um, just, to, just estimate to the best of your ability and, and pop that number down. Okay, section D um, is focused on finance. The questions in this section are mandatory, except for a, a few specific types of, of charities, and they include the ones that, um, for, for, for which it's not mandatory, include non-government schools and basic religious charities. Just, just quickly on that term there, basic religious charities, that's a specific term within the ACNC con context that refers to a particular type of, of charity registered with the ACNC. So it's not, it's not just a, a term that describes any religious charity that is basic. It's, it's a particular term that the ACNC has to categorise a particular type of religious charity which meets several criteria. There is some information on our website um, about basic religious charities and, and some helpful guidance for you to determine whether or not your charity meets the criteria to be considered a basic religious charity. But if you're unsure, it, it's worth reading um, through some of that guidance. As I said, it, it's not just a, a, a basic description of any religious charity that, that may consider itself to be basic. The questions in the finance section do vary, and this will depend on a charity's size. There, is, um, there are more questions that are required for medium and large charities. We will touch more on charity size a little bit later on, but just very briefly, a medium-sized charity is one that has annual revenue of more than $250,000 up to a million, well, up to $999,999, and then at the million dollar mark, that's where a large, it becomes a large charity. So those medium and large sized charities will have to answer a few more questions than a small charity, which is um, with revenue of under $250,000 a year. Before you get into answering the financial, financial part of the annual information statement, it's important just to note that in the past couple of years we've noticed some charities um, have uh, made some errors in this section. And in many cases they may be really simple errors such as um, omitting a zero off, off one of the figures or um, forgetting to um, include a particular figure or some, some information. We've, we've come across these errors and the charities that we identified as having made errors have had to um, look over their AIS again and then correct the errors and submit it again. So before you do um, get to this section and, and answer the questions, it, 
I just want to really um, stress that it's important to get the figures correct. It will save you having to to do this again in a couple months' time. You don't want to hear from us to, to let you know that you, we found an error in the in the financial information that you submitted and you have to do the this section again and correct the errors. It's, it's really worth taking the time to get this correct now, get the figures right, and double check them to make sure you don't have to do this again later. We do have, um, just on these errors, we do have some guidance on the website that which we'll include in the link actually. I, I mentioned some guidance on the website as we go through and sometimes the, the URL isn't on the, on the screen that you can see, but if I do mention that we have some guidance and there is, there's um, good information on the website, it will be included in the follow-up email that we send. So, so don't worry about um, frantically trying to find it on our website, we, we will provide you with a link. Having said that, <laughs> there is some guidance that um, addresses the errors that we've found in the past uh, few years. So it's worth having a look at those just, just to be aware of the, the type of um, problems that we've come across so that you don't fall victim to that, that fate either. As I said, the, the guidance, the, sorry, the, the requirements within the form are according to charity size and you can see, see it listed there. And we have the URLs there actually to help you for this one. So acnc.gov.au forward slash charity size explains that in more detail. Um, forward slash basic religious charity looks at the um, requirements for that particular type of charity. And acnc.gov.au forward slash forms is um, a section on the website that contains some forms which you may need to fill out if you need to apply to have your charity size um, altered for a particular year or if you need to apply to have your reporting period changed or, or something like that. Um, so as Matt mentioned, um, char uh, pardon me, charity size is based on annual revenue. So some of you might be wondering what annual revenue is. So basically revenue Revenue is a part of income created from the sale of goods or services or any other use of capital or assets associated with the ordinary operations of your charity. Um, revenue is usually shown at the top line items in an income profit and loss statement. Um, and just by way of example, um, revenue can include such things as grants from government, um, foundations, private or any other sources, any donations or any fees for services, sale of goods, um, and any interest earned on investments and dividends. Um, so revenue can be um, a little bit complicated. So, um, so the Australian Accounting Standards AASB 118 and AASB 1004 provide um, some more technical accounting detail on, on what revenue entails, and um, there's a link there that will take you to that um, yeah, for a more further explanation. But of course, if you have any specific questions about your charity size and revenue, you can of course call us on 132262 or email advice at acnc.gov.au and we can answer your questions um, on that one-on-one -on -one basis there. Um, so we do have a calculator, um, oh, not us uh, per se, but there is a calculator available um, on that URL, the accountingforgood.com.au forward slash ACNC hyphen calculator. Um, so if you're not too sure of what your charity size is, if you're hovering between that small and medium size um, line there and you're not too sure which side of the fence you will fall, um, if you put in some figures here into this calculator, um, that will actually um, determine what your charity size is. So um, yeah, that's a really good uh, resource there to have. Um, if you're not too sure what your revenue is and, and what charity size you fall into. Great, thanks April. Um, yeah, that is a really handy one and a lot of charities we've heard have, have found that useful um, in calculating their annual revenue. So it's, it's worth having a look at if you're unsure. Charities um, with no transitional reporting arrangements must submit um, the following as part of this section of the annual information statement. So a financial report for the reporting period, 
Uh, by the way, this is optional for small charities. Um, medium and large must submit this, but um, small charities have an option too. It may be a good idea if you have if you have a financial report ready to go anyway. It may be a good a good idea to submit it. But if you're a charity that has annual revenue of less than two hundred fifty thousand dollars a year, there's no um, mandatory requirement um, for it. A financial report for the reporting period, which includes a statement of profit and loss and other other comprehensive income, statement of financial position, changes in equity, cash flows, notes to the financial statements, a responsible person's declaration about the statements and the notes. Um, April did mention uh, very briefly at the beginning that a responsible person, uh, or maybe not, <laughs> we didn't go over that one, but a responsible person in the ACNC context is the member of the charity's uh, governing body, which in most cases is going to be a committee or a board, um, and it, it's the people that sit on that governing body and, and make the direct the charity and make decisions on behalf of the charity. So that's what we mean there by responsible persons. It also needs a reviewer, reviewer's report and an auditor's report, which is signed and dated. Um, for medium charities, um, there is an option to have just a reviewed financial report rather than an audited financial report. However, for large charities, it must be an audited report. So if your um, charity has annual revenue of more than a million dollars, you will need to supply an auditor's report, which is also signed and dated. There is um, some really good guidance on the website for this particular section of the annual information statement at acnc.gov.au forward slash financial statements and also within the 2016 annual information statement guide, which does go over every question in a little bit more detail. So if you're having a little bit of trouble with this part of the form, I suggest those two resources are the best way to, to get through it. The financial statements uh, for acnc.gov.au forward slash financial statements and the guide that we spoke about a little bit earlier which is acnc.gov.au forward slash 2016 AIS. Okay, so Matt touched this touched on this a little bit earlier on, <laughs> um, but just to go over it again, um, uh, it is really important to get the financial section of the annual information statement right. Um, it's important to remember we do check the information submitted in the annual information statement, including the financial information. So upon reviewing some of the figures um, in the 2015 annual information statements, for example, um, we did notice that there were some charities that submitted the 2015 AIS with um, financial errors. Um, so just on your screen there are some uh, tips to, I guess, avoid um, yeah, putting any incorrect information in the financial section as um, those charities that, that we did identify as having incorrect information were contacted and, and asked to resubmit um, the AIS. Hopefully this won't be too much of an issue going forward as um, we've introduced an auto calculation function in the 2016 annual information statement. Um, but yeah, there are some, some tips to, uh, to think about to avoid um, yeah, making those mistakes. Um, so just on the slide there, um, it's important to know your charity size and your financial report type. So for example, if you're a large size charity, remember you need to submit that audited financial statement. Um, if you're a basic religious charity, make sure um, you are definitely a basic religious charity. Um, Self-assess correctly and if you're not a basic religious charity, um, submit all the um, information required of you. Um, and of course, check your figures. So just have a second pair of eyes, just go over your annual information statement before you submit it just to make sure um, the figures in there all add up and are correct. And remember to submit um, all the financial information required of you. So um, like the details in the last screen there, the responsible person's declaration, any notes of the financial statement. Um, just make sure we've got the complete financial report um, when you provide that to us if required. Um, and like Matt mentioned, just check your figures. Um, a lot of the errors we found were just little 
typos and um, other little mistakes such as adding an extra zero. Um, so yeah, again, just might be a good idea to have um, someone just check it before you press that submit button at the end. Thanks, April. And don't forget to have a look at the size-specific guidance as well. If you, if you know your charity is medium or large and you're having trouble with the financial section, there is some guidance specifically for that size charity on the website at those um, URLs down at the bottom of the screen there. acnc.gov.au forward slash small reporting, medium reporting or, or large reporting. For some of the more technical, um, I guess, accounting um, sections of the annual information statement, it, it really is worth having a look at the um, uh, some of the information we've got on, on the website. So the, the annual information statement does ask about cash or accrual accounting practices. We, we go into this in more detail on the website there at acnc.gov.au forward slash cash accrual. It does ask about special or general purpose financial statements, which again um, is uh, covered in, in much more detail um, on the website at acnc.gov.au forward slash financial statements. And of course the differences between a review and an audit and the requirements for having one or the other are covered at acnc.gov.au forward slash review audit. Also if you have any questions about this, now, general questions is probably the best um, way to go, but feel free to, to type them into the GoToWebinar panel on the right-hand side. We do have um, our colleagues, Caitlin, Chris, and another Matt answering some questions there for you. So if, if you've um, struggled at some point in the financial section of the annual information statement and you would like some guidance now, then feel free to type in the question. Otherwise, if, if you want something really specific about your charity's situation, then it, it, it is best to either send us an email directly or give us a call to talk about it on 132262. Okay, so um, in addition to your requirement to submit an annual information statement and any financial reports along with that to the, AC, to the ACNC, um, it's important to note that you may also have an obligation to report to other regulators. Um, so this will often depend on your legal structure. So for example, if you're a company limited by guarantee, you may have obligations to ASIC, or if you're an incorporated association, you may have obligations to your state or territory regulators such as fair trading or um, consumer and business affairs. Um, so unless you're notified otherwise, your obligation to submit the AIS to the ACNC is in addition to any other obligations you may have to other regulators. Um, we are working to streamline um, the reporting obligations of charities um, to have more of a one-stop shop um, in the future, but for the moment just keep in mind that um, you do need to keep up any other obligations with um, yeah, any other regulators as well. Um, but in saying that, we do have transitional reporting arrangements in place, so um, we've got ORIC on the screen there, so like I briefly mentioned before, um, if you're registered with ORIC, um, you simply need to continue to report to ORIC rather than submitting financial information to both the ACNC and ORIC. Um, and if you're um, a non-government school um, that provides a financial report or a financial questionnaire to the Department of Education, the ACNC will actually accept um, that financial questionnaire submitted to the Department of Education and Training is meeting the financial reporting requirements of the ACNC. So, um, yeah, we are working to streamline that duplicative reporting requirement for some charities out there. Great, thanks, April. As you can probably see, the, the, the section, the financial section of the annual information statement, is, it's fair to say, is probably the most um, uh, most difficult for most charities and, and contains some of the um, the the questions and, and answers, I guess, that are difficult to, to find. So it's, it's worth taking the time to um, think about the information that you need to provide and, and um, as April mentioned, having, having some of the figures or, or the details checked by another person before you submit it. You don't want to be caught up in, in having to correct errors in a few months' time after having sat through and, and submitted the form once. Section E, on the other hand, is, is probably a little bit more simple than the financial section. This one just asks um, whether or not the details that 
the ACNC holds for your charity are um, current and, and accurate and up to date. So the ones that we're looking for, um, the information that this refers to is the governing document of the charity, is the governing document that you've supplied to the ACNC a current one? Have you supplied a governing document at all? Uh, it's one of the requirements of a registered charity, so make sure you, you um, are clear about the answer to that one. Just quickly, a governing document is, some people um, may not know what that refers to, it's a, the formal document that sets out the uh, rules and, and processes of your charity. In many cases it will be called a constitution. Some organisations call it uh, rules or organisation rules or articles of association. They're some of the common types, the common names, but um, it, yeah, it, it's the formal document that sets out the, the reason that your charity was established, the rules and processes it follows and, and why it does, um, what its purposes are and why it does what it does. Check that the responsible persons listed with the ACNC are, are accurate. This is one that um, some charities will, will definitely need to, to get onto. There has been a board meeting earlier in the year or after the annual general meeting there was a change in board members or committee members and the charity didn't get around to logging into the ACNC and, uh, website and, and making the change. Now's a good chance to just check these details and make sure that the ones that are currently um, with the ACNC are correct. And of course a charity subtype too, so a charity, um, charities are registered with the ACNC under particular subtypes which are sort of like a category or a type of charity um, that reflects the sort of work you do. It's worth checking that, that you have a charity subtype registered and, and that that is still accurate. An important thing to note though with Section E, you can't make these changes within the annual information statement. So it asks you whether or not the details are correct. If they're not, you will have to make the changes in the charity portal. It's something I did mention briefly at the beginning of the, of the webinar, that you'll have to um, go back into the charity portal. That's the, the main section where you manage your charity's details and then from there you'll need to provide an accurate governing document or the list of responsible persons or make sure your charity subtypes are correct. So moving on to section AF, ancillary funds. Um, this section is actually new to the 2016 annual information statement. Um, it's only for ancillary funds though, so it probably won't appear to many of you out there. Um, and if that's the case, uh, this section won't appear for you when you complete the annual information statement. Um, but for those of you that this does apply to, um, completing this section actually replaces the requirement to lodge a separate Australian Taxation Office ancillary fund return for 2016. Um, however, this information is not for publication and will simply be forwarded to the ATO only. Um, again, it forms part of our work to streamline reporting obligations for charities, um, making life easier for them. Um, but yeah, it's just something that is quite new and yeah, probably won't apply to many of you out there. If you're not an ancillary fund, you're not going to see that in the annual information statement, so I wouldn't get too caught up on um, what it means and how you answer it if, you, if you're not one of those entities. And finally, section G probably doesn't need too much guidance here, it's just the declaration um, which asks you to confirm that all the information you provide in the AIS is true and correct. And before signing it, I think April is probably worth mentioning, once again, check the financial details in your annual information statement before you sign this declaration and check it. Go back over the financial section, just have a breeze over the, <laughs> the details, have someone else check them to make sure you haven't made any errors. And um, make sure you uh, check the right declaration box and don't forget to submit. Um, believe it or not, we've, uh, we've had quite a few uh, charities complete the entire annual information statement only to be told, um, only to be called by us to tell them that they haven't done it and it was simply because they forgot to click the submit button at the end. Don't forget to scroll down to the, to the bottom of that page and, and click the submit button. That way you won't get called by us in a, in a few weeks' time to ask you where the annual information statement is and you, you, will have, you will have actually submitted it. Don't forget that simple step. You'll get a confirmation of submission email when you do submit, so that'll be 
something you can hold on to for your records to confirm that it has come through to us correctly. Yeah. And a little hint, if you don't receive that confirmation email, it suggests maybe you haven't completed it yet and you haven't hit the submit button, it's probably the likely culprit. Um, so, because the annual information statement is a legal obligation, um, there are of course consequences in not complying with that requirement. Um, so, a couple of things may happen. Um, if you don't submit your annual information statement um, and take no action to try and do so, the ACNC can issue penalty notices. Um, so, if we find that a charity is not is is deliberately not meeting its obligation to report, um, you may get some sort of penalty notice. Um, we will also publish a statement on the ACNC register um, stating that the information uh, annual information statement um, has yet to be submitted and is now a considerable amount overdue. Um, and if that's the case, um, we will put a red mark on your charity's register entry indicating that the annual information statement is six months um, or more late. So with the increase uptake in using the charity register by the public, by donors or funders or grant makers um, who use the charity register to look at a charity's details, um, having a red mark on your register listing might be detrimental for you. So we do encourage you to get the annual information statement submitted in a timely fashion to avoid uh, this red mark displaying on your record or, or any penalty notices being issued. Um, and of course, if you do get this um, annual information statement submitted, the red mark will disappear, but until that point, um, that red mark will be on your register listing. And as April mentioned, there are penalties, so it can, there can be a heavy financial cost for, for persistent non-compliance. Um, so even though there are, there are penalties that, that, that can, the ACNC can reach for, in these circumstances, it, it, it's unlikely that this is going to happen the day after or for, for one day um, late or anything like that. But just know that persistent non-compliance does um, bring about the risk of um, fairly, fairly significant financial penalties. So I guess the worst case scenario that you'd put yourself at risk at in not submitting the annual information statement is becoming what we call a double default to charity. Um, so if a charity does not submit an AIS for two years, the ACNC will work towards revoking its charity registration, um, which will also result in the loss of the charity tax concessions. So when that happens, um, we do display a list of these double defaulted charities on the ACNC website, um, and you can see the URL there, acnc.gov.au forward slash double defaulters. Um, so it might be worthwhile having a look at that list um, just to see if there's any charities in your area that you know of that might have had their registration revoked but are actually still operating. Um, if that's the case, um, get them to contact us as soon as possible um, so we can get them back on the register. They will need to submit any outstanding information but um, it's something that we can reverse. That brings us to the end of the main presentation. Um, as I mentioned before, there are, there is a lot, of, a lot of handy resources on the website to help you through the annual information set and we've got a list of the, of the URLs to those resources here. We will include all of these in the follow-up email, so no need to uh, start frantically trying to write all of these down, we will we'll send them to you, but it's, it's definitely worth checking um, the ones that um, apply to the specific sections that, that you feel you may have trouble with or you are in fact having trouble with. The one that I, I would really recommend you go to first is that one at the top there, acnc.gov.au forward slash 2016AIS. Not only does it have a full comprehensive text explanation of all the questions within the annual information statement, there are handy little, I guess we could call them how-to videos for each section that explain what, uh, how you answer particular questions and, and what the information that you need to answer those questions. But as I said, we will um, uh, provide all of these in a follow-up email, so there's no need to, to write them all down right now. And of course, we, um, if you want to stay in touch with um, the ACNC, we have regular commissions columns that are sent fortnightly, and email updates. There is lots of web guidance, um, podcasts coming soon, some more video content, and of course, webinars such as these. If you have any specific questions about your charity, um, give us a call on 132262. 
we'll be able to um, help you out as best we can. And, and if there's if there's anything that's troubling you about the uh, annual information statement, that that's really the place to go to get some some detailed um, targeted guidance. Or if you prefer email, feel free to send us an email at advice at acnc.gov.au. And of course, we're pretty active on social media too. Thanks for um, sticking around and, and listening to today's webinar. We hope it has been useful. We hope that it's um, been able to clarify some parts of the eight annual information statement that you may have found tricky before. And if there is anything that we haven't covered, um, feel free to send us an email. We'll, we'll be able to get back to you. Or as I mentioned before, give, give our advice services team a call on 132262. And of course, we welcome feedback, as I mentioned at the beginning. So if there's anything that you can suggest, anything you'd like us to cover, any improvements we can make, I'm sure there are plenty, um, send us an email at education at acnc.gov.au. All of our webinars for 2017 are listed on the website, acnc.gov.au forward slash webinars. So if there are any topics coming up that look of interest to you, note them down in your calendar and, and um, once the, the links to register come about, you can register and, and join join us for another webinar. April, we did receive a few questions throughout, so we're going to just um, run through a bit of a Q&A now. Um, we hope that uh, we've selected some questions that we think would be useful for most um, people, most charities. So if, you, if you've if you got a couple of burning questions that haven't been covered by the rest of the presentation, we've still got a few minutes for you to jump on board and, and um, type in the question now, but we'll, we'll go through a couple of them that came up as we went through. Yeah, so we have had a few questions come through. Thank you for everyone who's asked questions throughout the session today. Um, we've got one here, Matt. Um, we touched on the address for service earlier on. Um, it is a mandatory field in the AIS. Um, there's someone who said that they don't have a, a generic charity email address. They've just got their own personal email address and they're just conscious that that goes on the website and um, they're not too sure that they want that out there. Is there any way around that? Any recommendations? Um, the less a way around it and more recommendation is to is to probably look at getting a generic email address, something such as info at charity.org or um, admin at charity.org, something of that nature, which um, can be which you'd feel comfortable with going up on the website and, and as a representation of the charity's address, main address for service. That's probably the the best course of action for something like this. But the other benefit of that is that when it doesn't it doesn't restrict the communications between the ACNC and the charity to to a single person. That person's um, email address inbox. We've seen in the past where charities have missed notifications and missed reminders because the person that they had um, used their email address for the address for service left the organisation and didn't pass it on or didn't change it with the ACNC. And charities have um, found themselves in a little bit of strife regarding their reporting for having not known that they had fallen behind because they simply hadn't received the email. So the best course of action is to um, use a generic one, even if that means um, using one of the free web-based servers such as Gmail or uh, Live.com or Yahoo email. There's plenty of them out there that are free that are worth probably using as a, as a generic email address. Having said that, doesn't mean you can't use a person's individual email address as your address for service. That is, of course, up to the charity which address they want to use as the, the main address for service. It's just probably best um, best practice in, in this sort of context to use a, a generic one. Very good. Um, just another one that's come through. Um, can charities uh, print the AIS before submission, say if they want to take it to their board to approve? Um, can that be done? Unfortunately, at the moment, no, it can't. We, we recognise the, the, I guess, a call for this, where it might be handy to be able to print out all the answers and show them to the board um, before you submit. The functionality of the form at the moment doesn't allow for this, but what we would suggest is um, using the the worksheet that's available, and as you as you fill in the forms, if you want us to just take a note of of the answers you're providing online on the written worksheet, that's that's a, a workaround for that for that lack of functionality and you can use that worksheet just to show your board or your management committee or whoever you need to show to get approval before you um, before you submit the answers. It is something that um, we're aware of and at the moment the, the best way is to, to use the worksheet um, to, to get around that. You, you can 
Um, after submission, it's a different story and you can print off the answers then, um, but, but um, before you submit, we can't uh, print off the, the, the form as it is. I've got one more, um, April, just on that actually, a follow-up. We're, we're sort of running out of time um, pretty quickly today, but we'll go one more. It sort of touches on the one that I just answered, and someone asked about making a mistake in the AIS. So I guess there is the case where someone does submit it, then print off the submitted AIS, show the board, and the board says, hey, this is a mistake, what's going on? What, what can that someone do in that situation? Yeah, if that's the case, um, what I'd recommend is just getting in touch with us, um, sending us an email at advice at acnc.gov.au, just um, letting us know that um, there's been a mistake in the 2016 annual information statement and you need to amend it, and just include your AVN um, and the year that you want to resubmit, whether it's the 2016 one or any prior years, and we can arrange for that annual information statement to be put back in progress for you, where you can actually re-access the form, um, amend your answers, and then resubmit. So just let us know, and we can certainly help you out. Okay. And that probably is it for today. We've already crossed over the hour mark. We're <clears throat> after one o'clock, and I'm sure most of you are keen to get some lunch. Um, Thanks for sticking around with us for the full hour. We really appreciate it, and we hope that you've gotten something out of this. There are a couple of questions that have that have hung around um, that we haven't been able to answer, but we will get to those questions um, via email and provide an answer to you. So if you haven't had your question answered, um, we, don't worry. We, we um, haven't forgotten you. We will get to those questions. Once again, thanks everyone for for joining us today, and. Be sure to go on to the website to have a look at the rest of this year's um, scheduled webinars and see if there are any topics coming up that look of interest to you and to send us an email with your feedback, suggestions, improvements, comments, that sort of thing. Thank you.